Greetings, Python coders. This is once again Alan D. Moore, and I am still the author of Mastering GUI Programming with Python, a book that will leave your PyQt programming skills whiter, brighter, and free of wrinkles. Available from Amazon.com or from the publisher Packed Publications. I will have links down in the description. Okay, in our last video, we added icons to our text editor as you can see here. But unfortunately, we found a problem in that if we ran our script from another directory, we lost all of our icons. That's definitely a problem, of course, because we can't always be sure that a user will launch our code from the directory that it lives in. So let's take a look at two things. Let's first take a look at why this happens, and then let's look at what we can do about it. So back in our code, let's take a look at one of our calls to Qt Pixmap. Right here, we're calling Qt Pixmap and loading in our search magnifying glass icon. Notice that we just use the file name here. You may be taking it for granted that there's, this is actually not just a file name, this is a path, okay? So paths in Python are of two kinds. They can either be absolute or they can be relative. An absolute path begins with the root of a file system. So, for example, on Unix, like Linux or, or Mac OS, this would have a forward slash and then directory names, right? And we would have an actual full path starting with root. Okay, on Windows, it would be a path like this with a drive letter and all your directories in between. That would be an absolute path. Without that root at the beginning, what we're giving it is a relative path. And the question, of course, is relative to what? The answer is the current working directory. So in Python, wherever we run our Python script from becomes our current working directory. We can use the OS module to find out the current working directory using the get cwd function. All right, so let's print that out. Go back to the terminal. Oops. Let's run our text editor and we see this is our current working directory. That also happens to be the directory that our icons are in. which means that when we provide this relative path of just the file name, it looks in that current working directory and sees that file. Now, when we go back out of that directory, now you can see our current working directory is not the directory where the files are. Therefore, it's actually looking for those under my home directory here, rather than in the directory where all the program files are. And that's why we're not seeing those images. Now, it's worth noting that QPixMap does not throw any kind of an error when it can't find an image. If you try to make an open call in Python, it will throw an error. It will raise an exception, actually, when you can't find the file it's trying to open. QPixMap, however, will just quietly go on, which is kind of a problem, and that's why this bug can really mess you up. You don't get any kind of indication from QPixMap that anything went wrong. So now that we know the nature of the problem that we're dealing with, what's the solution? Well, one option that we can do is, of course, just to give an absolute path to everything. Um, maybe we'll decide that it needs to belong in user share. 
that's not a great solution because, well, for one thing, we've just made it not a cross-platform application. And of course, it won't work at all if it's not being run from that location. We certainly don't want to limit where the user can install our application. We want it to work from anywhere on the system especially if we're working on it for debugging purposes or uh, adding features. So the other option that Python developers quite often do revolves around the use of the underscore underscore file variable or dunder file as we like to call it. This variable in any Python script always points to the absolute path of the module that we're in. So in this case, the texteditor.py file. If I print this, you'll see we actually get the path. And this time it's relative to my current working directory. But in any case, that is the path to that file. What we can do with that then is we can use some os.path functions to calculate the directory that contains this file and then we can work out from there the relative paths to our images or other resources. Alright, so Let's try this. We'll say base dir equals base dir equals os dot oops not parth being a little bit piratey today. Then we can use the os dot path dot join method to join our base directory to our files. And let's try this. And as you can see. Now our search icon, our magnifying glass icon, shows up. The others don't because we haven't added the base directory to them yet. So this approach works pretty well, especially for very simple applications. And I see it all the time being used in Python programs. However, with PyCute we have a better way to do this. There are some limitations with the file approach, especially when you start using uh, packaging programs like CXFreeze or PyInstaller and we kind of want to avoid that. So how can we use PyCute to put these images in a place where we can access them from anywhere? To do that we start with a file called a Qute resource file and here's how it works. We create a little XML file, okay, and this is the structure of it. Inside this QResource tag, we have these file tags, and each one contains the name of our file. Now, these are also paths. These are relative to the location of our QRC file. So right away you're thinking, well, how does that help anything? Well, you'll see in just a moment, because this isn't the end. Once we have that QRC, we use a tool called PyRCC5. This is Python RC Compiler 5. And we're going to compile our QRC file. Okay, and we actually need to specify an output file. We'll just call it resources.py. Now, let's look at resources.py. What you'll see inside this file is primarily just this variable, cute resource data, set to a byte string. And it's a long bytes object. Very long. That bytes object contains all the data for all of our images. So we have just turned our individual images into bytes objects. Okay, and then there's some different functions here at the end being called um, to work with the resource files. So once we have that, to use it, all we have to do is import it. OK, 
Okay, once we've imported it, all of those images are available using a special syntax. We say colon forward slash and then our file name. So let's go back to the command line. Let's leave this directory and let's try running our application. And here you can see we have our search icon. We can do the same for all of our images. All right, now when we run it, now we have all of our icons. A couple of other things we can do here, uh, if we want to organize this just a little better, we can add to these Q resource tags a prefix. And what that will do is put them in a subdirectory under this colon slash. We'll have to recompile that. Oh, we need to output that actually to our resources file. Now you can see only the paste one shows up because I only put the directory on that one. So that moved all of those images into an images subdirectory of our resources file. So another cool thing you can do with these is add an alias to the file. And when you do that, you can refer to that by a different name. If for some reason the name of the file needs to stay what it is, but you don't want to use that in your program, maybe it's too cumbersome or whatever, um, this might be an alternative way of handling that. Okay, let's go ahead and add images to all these. And there you go. Now we have all of our icons available. So that's the Qt resources system. It's very handy for including all kinds of files that you might want to have. And once you have compiled it, you just have a Python file. So you can keep that in your source control. You can just include it in a Python module or library. You know, it's just easy to deal with like any other Python file. Hope that helps you guys out, shows you how to solve that problem. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Please subscribe to the channel to get more content like this. And as always, happy coding. God bless.